Welcome to the Enamena video tutorial unit 5.1 Introduction to deflectometry and concentrating solar power applications. My name is Christoph Prahl. I've been working for five years at DLR in the CSP field's optical measurement of concentrator shape and collector development. Let's have an overview of the objectives of units 5.1 to 5.4. We want to learn to understand the influence of concentrator shape errors, their order of magnitude and why they need to be controlled and measured and improved. We want to get to know the general possibilities where deflectometry can be used in concentrating solar power applications. We will also learn how to perform a deflectometric measurement on a parabolic trough collector module. We will do this on our own in an exercise but without the evaluation procedure, which will be shown by screenshots. We will also learn how to read and interpret the results. In the first unit, Introduction to Deflectometry, we will talk about the following issues. Why is quality assurance of solar concentrators important? What kind of optical errors occur in CSP concentrators? What is deflectometry and how does it work? And for which types of concentrators can deflectometry be used? We will also learn why a parabolic trough collector is a special case for deflectometry and how to handle the deflectometric measurement of a parabolic trough. We will get to learn other possibilities to measure geometrical properties of concentrators. As a motivation, we want to know why the quality assurance of solar concentrators is important. For a CSP power plant, the solar field is a big part of the total investment. And the yearly plant output strongly depends on the optical quality of the collector field. Measurements have shown that without proper quality assurance, 3 to 10 percent and in some cases even more of the field performance can be lost. An estimation shows that 1% less performance in a Spanish 50 megawatt plant with thermal storage corresponds to a yearly economic loss of half a million euros. In addition, quality assurance and final acceptance tests of collector fields are necessary for the control of subcontractors and warranty claims. Finally, it has been shown that quality assurance of collector field assembly is indispensable and makes economic sense. First of all, we want to have an introduction to shape and slope deviation of CSP concentrators. In general, there are three different types of CSP concentrators, the parabolic trough, the solar power tower with heliostats and as another point focusing application, the parabolic dish. Shape errors of the concentrators have a significant impact on the optical efficiency of the systems and thus the performance of the total power plant. The critical measure is the slope deviation and not the shape deviation. This example illustrates that. We have an incoming sun ray which is reflected in this case by a heliostat to the receiver and if the heliostat has the ideal shape and the optimal orientation the incoming sun ray is directly reflected into the center of the aperture. If we now have a deviation of the position of the heliostat from its ideal position denoted by the blue line here, the corresponding deviation of the reflected ray is rather small and in the same order of magnitude as the shape deviation. So shape deviations don't have a major influence on the optical performance. However, if there is a slope deviation, not the position of the reflected ray is changing, but its direction. So even small slope deviations can have large influences on the direction of the reflected rays and depending on the distance from the heliostat to the receiver, the reflected ray may completely miss the receiver. As a consequence, we need to measure slope deviations because shape deviations are only secondary. There are different kinds of concentrator errors as shown in the graphics on the right. There can be microscopic surface errors, which may be caused by the roughness of the mirror. For example, metal concentrators or mirrors have in general a lower surface quality than glass mirrors. There may be macroscopic surface deviations, waviness, mirror contour errors, deformations and structure errors, which lead to a deviation of the reflected sun ray from its design direction. Another concentrator can be the positioning of the receiver tube in case of a parabolic trough which might not exactly match the focal line. Also bending and deformation tube is covered with this. Another effect is a tracking error and module alignment in case of a parabolic trough that not all modules and their optical axis are pointing in the same direction. Also torques like friction, wind load may lead to a torsion of the collector and others covered by tracking errors. Since the sun is not a point source, 
but has a certain angular extent, its shape must also be taken into account when estimating the influence of concentrator errors. We now want to estimate the allowed order of magnitude of concentrator errors. The order of magnitude of concentrator errors which is allowed depends mainly on the dimension and concentration ratio of a parabolic trough. On the right we have a cross section through a parabolic trough showing typical dimensions of an aperture width of 6 meter, a focal length of 1.7 meter and a radius of the absorber tube of 35 millimeter. So the maximum distance from the surface of the mirror to the focal line is in the range of 3 meter. Due to the small allowed concentrator errors, the appropriate unit to express concentrator errors is milliradian. So the angle of a distance of 1 millimeter to 1 meter. 1 degree is approximately 17.5 5 milliradian. If we assume now typical values for a parabolic trough collector with the Euro trough or LS3 dimensions, we have a distance from the mirror to the focal line between 1.7 to 3 meter and a radius of the absorber tube of 35 millimeter. So the allowed error budget of the deviation of the reflected ray from its design direction is in the order of 12 to 20 milliradian. From this error budget we have to subtract the sun shape which is in the range of 4.6 milliradian because we don't want to have only the center of the sun reflected on the tube but the entire cone of light coming from the sun. So the error budget is reduced to 8 to 16 milliradian. Up to now we have only had a look at the angle deviation of the reflected light but since we want to know the error budget of concentrator shape or slope deviations we have to estimate the surface slope which is allowed which is only half of the angle deviation of the reflected light. So we have to divide the average by a factor of 2. So we end up with allowed surface slope deviations in the order 4 to 8 milliradian. If we assume a Gaussian error distribution and we want to have all the reflected lights, the reflected rays hitting the absorber tube, one standard deviation of surface slope errors is in the range of 1.5 to 3 milliradian. But since the concentrator not only has surface slope errors but also other sources like deviation of the absorber tube from its design position, tracking errors and so on, the sigma value must be lower than the mentioned 1.5 to 3 milliradian. Next, we will have a look at the measurement principle of deflectometry. In general, we have the mirror we want to measure, so the measurement equipment consists mainly of a camera, of a projector and of a projection screen. The projector creates a pattern on the projection screen. The camera sees the reflected pattern of the mirror which is generally a little bit distorted, so straight lines on the projection screen correspond to distorted lines on the mirror. If we can assign to every point on the projection screen a corresponding point on the mirror and we also know the camera position, we can calculate by the law of reflection the local slope at this particular point and compare the local slope to the design slope. To obtain that clear identification of spatial coordinates on both the projection screen and the mirror, the projector creates an image series of sinusoidal pattern with different phase and increasing frequency. From these patterns, the spatial coding on both screen and mirror can be obtained, both in vertical and also horizontal direction. We will now have a look at the measurement setup of deflectometry for different applications. In the first case, we see the measurement setup for individual mirror panels of parabolic troughs. Such a measurement setup is shown on the left, where we have at the wall mirror panels in vertical position and on the floor mirror panels in horizontal position. To each setup, we have a corresponding target and the corresponding camera and projector. On the right, we see the patterns vertical and horizontal on the screen and the identical pattern as seen by the camera in the mirror. After the image processing, we obtain the result for such parabolic trough mirror panels, which is mainly the slope deviation in curvature direction, as shown in this image. To evaluate its optical performance, not only the spatial distribution of slope errors is important, but mainly its RMS value. For parabolic trough, we can also calculate slope deviation in longitudinal direction, which is of lower importance for the optical performance. 
from the slope error and the distance of point of reflection to the absorber tube, we can also calculate the focus deviation, which means the minimum distance of the reflected light from the ideal focal line. And by ray tracing, we can also calculate local maps of the intercept factor, which is the fraction of incoming light to light hitting the absorber. For this calculation, we also consider additional typical collector errors and the sun shape. Let's now have a look at the performance of deflectometry if applied to individual mirror panels. The performance is in general characterized by the measurement accuracy and speed. For the measurement uncertainty is below 0.5 milliradian. We can obtain a maximum resolution of 1 million points per mirror panel. The time for image acquisition is smaller than 30 seconds and the evaluation time is smaller than 1 minute per measurement depending on the resolution. We now have a look at the measurement setup if we want to measure the shape of heliostats in a solar power tower application. Again, we have this heliostat itself, we have a projector in the heliostat field and we need a projection screen which normally is mounted to the tower below, below the receiver. We then have a camera which should be mounted close to the projection screen and the camera again sees the distorted pattern which have been projected on the screen. The evaluation procedure is the same, so by the pattern we can assign a spatial coordinate to both the projection screen and the mirror. Again, if the camera position is also known, we can calculate the local slope at each point of the heliostat. If we want to apply deflectometry to parabolic dishes, the measurement setup is a little bit different. On the right, we see a cross section through the dish concentrator and close to its focal line, we can put a target plate where the pattern can be projected on. In this particular case, the projector is located behind the mirror surface. The camera is then located far away from the parabolic dish. And again, if we know the camera position, we can assign a spatial coordinate to the target and the mirror surface and calculate the local slope. In case of a parabolic dish, we now have a look at the image series as seen by the camera taking photos of the target and by the camera taking photos of the mirror surface itself. In the first picture, the projection is only a wide image. In the second picture, we have a horizontal pattern with a rather low frequency. The next pattern shows a higher frequency and with increasing frequency, the pattern shown on the parabolic dish gets more and more confusing. But in principle, it's possible to assign to any position on the target only one position on the mirror. Here we have an overview of all possible applications of deflectometry to different types of concentrating solar power. So we can apply deflectometry to dishes, heliostats and individual mirror panels of in this case a linear Fresnel concentrator, a single panel of a parabolic dish and a single panel of a parabolic trough. But what is now different if we want to apply deflectometry not only to a single panel of a parabolic trough, but to an entire collector field, or at least an entire collector? Why is this a special case? For a line focusing system, there is no central target possible, like in case of a parabolic dish or a heliostat. And due to its high rim angle, it's not possible to use a flat target close to the focal point. What possible solutions are there to measure parabolic troughs anyway by means of deflectometry? One could use a target and a camera on a mobile truck, which is possible but costly, inflexible and time consuming. So the preferred solution to apply deflectometry to a parabolic trough is to use the existing absorber tube as a target and as a pattern. So we have an easy setup, but the measurement procedure and evaluation are different from what has been shown before. This particular case will be explained in detail in the following units. The described measurement procedure is called TAMIS, which means Trough Absorber Reflection Measurement System. The basic idea and the setup are shown in the following. Compared to other deflectometric applications, we don't have a target where a projector projects a pattern on, but we use the absorber tube itself as a pattern. The edges of the absorber tube can be seen in the mirror surface, as shown in the image on the left. If we now know the position of the camera, the position of the absorber tube and the position of the reflex of the absorber tube, we can calculate a local slope at any position where the reflex is known. 
If there was only a single image available, there would only be two lines of edges of the absorber tube and its reflex on the mirror surface. So there's rather low spatial resolution because the information of slope deviation is only available at the position of the reflex of the absorber tube. So the solution is not to take only a single image but turning the collector and for every elevation angle taking a single image. The camera must therefore be located at sufficient distance from the absorber and from the trough. So we see here the first image where no reflex of the absorber tube is visible and if the collector is now turned we see the reflex of the absorber tube entering the mirror surface. For each of these images, an image processing procedure determines the position of the edge of the reflex and for each of these lines a slope deviation can be calculated. In this particular case we have one mirror panel which has been obviously been mounted the wrong direction. Let's now have a look at the evaluation procedure of these images. From a single image we have to cut the mirror area. In this particular case we only cut out a single row of mirror elements. These images are rectified by correcting the lens distortion and the spatial projection. So we end up with such an image. By determining an appropriate threshold we can distinguish the area of reflex of the absorber tube from the background. For not only a single image but a image series we have different lines of mirror of absorber tube edge reflexes which correspond to different elevation angles of the collector. And from these lines and the geometrical input and setup which means the position of the camera relative to the parabolic trough we can calculate local slope deviations. We have here an example where an entire parabolic trough collector module has been evaluated by this method. Green means that there is no slope error, so the real shape of the concentrator matches very good the ideal shape. But red and blue mean either to flat or to steep mirrors. We can assign statistical values to each single mirror panels and to the entire module. By taking into account the distance from the mirror to the absorber tube, we can calculate focus deviation from the slope deviations. These focus deviations can be directly compared to the radius of the absorber tube, so we have an idea whether a ray will hit or miss the absorber tube. By doing a ray tracing procedure, which again takes into account the sun shape and additional errors of the concentrator like tracking error or displacement of the absorber tube, we can obtain a local intercept map and also calculate the intercept of the entire module, which is in this case 98.3%. Let's now summarize the characteristics of the described TAMS method. We have a rather fast measurement and evaluation procedure. We have rather low preparation effort and no expensive equipment because we only need a digital camera and some devices to measure distances of the camera to the parabolic trough collector. 30 to 40 pictures at different collector positions are sufficient to characterize a single module. For the evaluation of the measurement, DLR is using a custom MATLAB code from which high resolution slope deviation maps are obtained. By ray tracing also the local and global intercept factor can be modeled. There are some necessary conditions for a successful evaluation of the image series. This is mainly the quality of the pictures because good image quality means good quality of the result. We also must make sure that no obstructing objects are visible in the images and a good documentation is also indispensable. The elevation angle corresponding to each image must be well documented and measured with sufficient accuracy. Since the position of the absorber tube serves as a pattern for the deflectometric evaluation, the geometry of the entire concentrator itself must be well known and especially the position of the absorber tube must be measured with high accuracy. There are alternative methods to obtain similar results to deflectometry. One possibility to estimate the optical performance of a parabolic trough collector module is photogrammetry. In the lower image we see a parabolic trough collector to which targets of photogrammetry have been applied to the mirror mounting points. Such a measurement mainly serves to check the structure behind the mirrors and its accuracy.
The result of such a measurement are only height deviations of the structure from the design. If the photogrammetric targets are applied with higher point density as shown in the image on the right, we can have a higher spatial resolution and also calculate a reliable slope deviation from such a measurement. Such a measurement also serves as cross-check and comparison for deflectometric measurement. Another alternative measurement procedure to obtain the quality of parabolic trough is called V-shot. Here the position of the reflected laser beam is documented by a camera and again by the law of reflection of incoming and reflected ray, the local slope deviation and the mirror position can be calculated. This is a scanning method, so the position of the absorber tube is not required. On the right we see a picture of the measurement setup and on the top right a result where slope deviations for one scan are shown. These are references with literature to the mentioned measurement methods.